hello internet and i just want to tell you that don't make a habit out of this um, type of episodes because they're not exactly the kind of stories i want to cover but they're technically inside my niche which is everything apparently now and i understand that this is very heavy contrast from um, you know memes but you got to deal with that that's that's all i'm going to say so anyway um cue the fucking I just want to get it right out, uh, out of my system but that don't make a habit out of these episodes this is a one time thing i hope i never have to do an episode like this uh and mostly i'm making this because i see a lot of blue dps and uh people trying to spread awareness about sudan and um well i didn't know a lot about the conflict beforehand either now I know enough to let you guys know. I'm just passing on the message here. I'm just telling you what I know. If you think there are any factual inaccuracies which I I highly doubt there will be, uh please feel free to correct me in the comment section or just message me if you know me personally or just DM me on Instagram. I mean, we'll talk about it. That's not a problem. And I'll even issue a correction statement if needed. So The shitstorm began in April of 2019 when Omar Al Bashir, the president who has been ruling Sudan for about 30 years, was kicked out of office by popular demand and of the protesters. So, by the will of the country, the military kicked out what was understood to be a dictator in Sudan, or dictatorial president at least, somebody who was refusing to give up power and was extremely corrupt basically and he was he was thrown out of office in a military coup basically the military took over the government and um, if any of you have read a history book like ever you know that that never works that's never a good thing when a military military takes arms up against its own government usually a shitstorm follows and this shitstorm includes a heavy human rights violation a heavy series of human rights violations it has happened before and this time was no different but i'm getting ahead of myself in april 2019 a transitional military council was established which means a government that would oversee a transitional period a, a transition of uh, this government's faltering and a new government being uh, entering into the civilian office and a democracy ensuing but that wasn't happening so a coalition of uh, pro democracy protesters organized a strike in the capital i think the it's pronounced khartoum is that how you pronounce it i'm not sure but basically in the capital there was a huge protest um and on june 3rd the government strictly maintains that because blockades were created and roads were blocked and this was in the violation of the law that the military ordered the crackdown on the protesters khartoum sorry i just remember like that's how they uh, pronounce it so in khartoum the protesters blocked off streets and they were uh, demonstrating against the government and eventually the government cracked down on them they made sure that uh people were moving so in that process they started shooting people and in the beginning we heard complete silence from the tmc but the doctors uh, present from uh, were doing humanitarian aid in the region report that about 118 people died and more than 600 were injured in the june 3 attack alone ever since now we know that i think last wednesday or last last wednesday the tmc has taken uh, responsibility for or at least admitted to uh, uh, calling the crackdown but they maintain only 68 people have died which is a highly unreliable number but this crackdown was overall the worst thing that could happen right now because it it has started this downward spiral in the in the 
conversation between the pro democracy protesters and uh, demonstrators and the military themselves which is the current government essentially both the parties now do not trust each other at all because they might they believe that there might be a paramilitary force brewing against the current government and they don't want want anybody questioning this authority with good intentions or not and um, ever since there has been a civil disobedience movement uh, against the government launched which is very popular in the country from what i understand looking up online and uh, to crack down on the civil do- disobedience movement the government has sh- turned out all the internet su- supply in massive areas of the country throughout the country they are making sure that people do not hear about the protests they can't communicate with each other so they can't oper- um what do you say they can't organize mass protests against them and uh, they've called uh, what is understood to be a civil di- disobedience movement which is a complete shutdown of everything in the streets the government has made sure that there are curfews in some areas and khartoum has become some parts of khartoum have become ground zero on the military rooms around there now this is the shit show on the on the f- uh, front the doctors also claim that soldiers have been raping some of the women and so have been some of the civilians because chaos has ensued a lot of crimes have been happening a lot of the female doctors have been raped is is what i've heard so far uh, i think my source is now this on that on that one and not now this um al jazeera is the one that that made that claim but it's not it's not far fetched is what i'm trying to tell you and um overall it's a conflict that has dwindled into this mass humanitarian abyss where chaos and a power vacuum chaos has ensued due to a power vacuum and a stable oppressive government going into the hands of authoritarian hands now the question is beyond turning your dp blue what else can you do and that is an excellent question which i would like to answer with the following donate there is a prog- program called doctors without borders which i'll leave um what do you call it? a link to see i forgot the word link <laughs> it's shortly there <sighs> dear god am i tired but doctors without borders is working in sudan for since 2017 uh, making sure that people who have lost their houses and are losing their health because of violence all over the all over the world uh, they come and they treat them so since 2017 they're the ones who who have been acting on the medical front in sudan on the ground and a lot of the reporting has been done by them as well so donating to them would help directly uh, to the cause it will reach it will provide humanitarian aid at least medical support towards the victims of these crimes by the government against the people and as to long term solutions i never like it but the f- the representative what do you call them the foreign ambassador oh shit i'm so dumb right now f- the foreign ups- uh, ambassador to the us has directly said that external navigation and mediation of dialogue is required right now in sudan both the parties do not trust each other to that point that uh, somebody from outside has to come in and mediate talks between the two because since june 3 the civilians have refused to talk to the tmc and political prisoners have been jailed is is the word around the campfire and all of this is extremely unreliable information because i'm not sure what sources to trust but looks like it because military look uh, military uh, governments always look like this prominent powerful popular political figures always get jailed in a military military coup doesn't necessarily mean it's happening but sounds like that's what is happening so external mediation is definitely required 
I usually don't like that either. Whenever an external government comes in, they sort of get a messiah syndrome and they fuck up things royally in their own fashion. And now people have somebody else to blame. But that's not important. What is important right now is those people could use your donations. I'm going to leave a link to Doctors Without Borders. Uh, if some of you actually believe the solution would happen, especially in the West, where in- interference is something they can afford or at least offer to host mediation in the region of uh, mediation or negotiation um, between the two parties, Con- contact your nearest representative. Let them know that that's what you need. Um, I Where I live, I don't think our country has the resources or the political pull to sit on the negotiator's chair in Sudan. And that's that's all I have for today. Bye. That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, though I know there was not a lot to enjoy about that story or there were any heroes in it or villains or anything. But I hope I was able to guide you in a direction where you could help a cause you believe in more. So... That's that. Uh, Consider supporting me on Patreon. If you like the show and like what I'm doing on my YouTube channel and on my podcast, uh, you can go to Patreon slash www.patreon.com slash deep fried neurons and support me there. Uh, Every bit, every bit helps. And uh, like, share, subscribe on my YouTube channel. Follow us on social media. All of it helps, helps me grow this channel. Thank you.